Welcome back to Ultrafix Workshop. In this final video, we will read the flow rate and do some first diagnostics on the measurement. The flow meter and the probes are ready. The last step is to connect them together with the probe cable. The two cables with push-pull connectors are marked 1 and 2. The cable 1 goes to the upstream probe, the cable 2 to the downstream one. Then, we plug the 5-pin connector to the flow meter and the flow rate automatically appears on the screen. If it is negative, simply invert the probe cables. Congratulations! You are reading your flow rate with an ultraflux flow meter. Let's review now the data given by the measuring mode. The first page displays the flow rate in the unit we chose in the fifth video. Then, we have a chart that displays the flow rate. You can adjust the scales in the pipe fluid settings menu. The pipe pages gives us information regarding the flow condition. There is the flow rate, the hydraulic coefficient kH that converts the fluid velocity measured on the cord into an average velocity for the pipe, the Reynolds number that determines the flow regime, and finally the measured fluid velocity. The next page focuses on the cord. There is first the fluid velocity and the speed of sound. It is good practice to check that the measured speed of sound is close to the expected one. Here are a few examples of speed of sounds for water at different temperatures. Then there is the travel time and the delta t which is the travel time's difference. The delta t should be close to zero when the flow is stopped. You can calibrate it using the auto zero function in the pipe fluid settings menu. The gain below is the amplification of the received signal. For regular applications, it should be below 50 dB. As for the IQ, it represents how much ultrasonic signals are valid over the last 100 shots. Regular applications often give an IQ of 100%, but it can be lower than that. However, an IQ below 30% is considered bad. If the totalizers are active, they will be displayed on this page. You can configure them in the totalizers menu. Here, one is counting only the positive flow by steps of 1 liter, and the other one will count the negative flow if it gets reversed in the pipe. The date and time, as well as the battery life, are available next. Then, if the logger is active, some information about it are displayed here. We arrive now to the alarm page. The device has three alarms. Alarm A is triggered when the measurement is lost. Alarm B is triggered if one cord or more are lost, but the measurement is still possible on the others. This is for multi-cords installations. And the alarm C is triggered if there is a problem on the inputs outputs. When an alarm is up, you can find more details about the faults in the next pages. Finally, the last page is the one giving the probe distance. We are now back to the flow measurement. This ends our workshop. Thank you for following it. You can contact us on our website if you have questions or inquiries. We hope you will enjoy working with our products.